Did Forrest Fenn really tell a man in a wheelchair that if I told you where the treasure was, you could go retrieve it for me? I believe that's true. A handicapped man could go to the spot the treasure was buried at. And also, Forrest Fenn said, give the poem to a child to read because they will see the amazing comic book references I'm about to show you. Let's see why Forrest Fenn said, give the poem to a child to read. Forrest Fenn's poem is the only map to the treasure. Forrest Fenn said the only way to find the treasure is by solving the map. The map is in the poem. Forrest Fenn said only one person in the whole wide world has truly solved this map inside the poem and led the solver precisely where the treasure was by solving the nine clues. Here are the clues broken down for a child to understand the hidden messages for Forrest's comment. As I have gone alone in there. Superman's Fortress of Solitude. There's also Solo by Marvel Comics. Also Doing It Alone, a comic about the so-called self-made men. And With My Treasures Bold, you have Treasure Island Comics. You have Treasure Chest Comics. I can keep my secret where. You have Secret Identity comics and Secret Six comics, which Forrest Fenn used this Secret Six in Bessie and Me story. You have comic book prices from all through the ages. And you have Richie Rich comics. Begin it where warm waters halt. You have water stop cartoons and comics. Hell or High Water cartoons and comics. And Take It in the Canyon Down, Steve Canyon Comics. This next line in the poem is incredible. Not far but too far to walk. The Philadelphia caper, Superman being grounded like Forrest Fenn's story in my war for me. The Philadelphia caper is where Forrest Fenn came up with the idea, getting Loopy up in his plane, about joining Ken and Esther together to make Canasta. And the blaze was up on a ledge. Now Forrest mentioned this story about the Philadelphia caper. If you read it in his My War For Me story, you will see. This is a story with the importance of the grave marker that entered back into his life years later and he melded the thoughts of Ken and Esther into Put one. In below the home of Brown, Buster Brown Comics and the Michael Caraldi comic book collection at Brown University. From there, it's no place for the meek. You have the Marvel character Ambrose Meek, and you have the Meek comics. The end is ever drawing nigh. You have the end is nigh cartoon and comics, and drawing nigh poems sold by Wooly Comics. There'll be no paddle up your creek. You have Up a Creek Without a Paddle, Cartoons and Comics. Just Heavy Loads and Water High. You have Heavy Loads, Cartoons and Comics, and you have Come Hell or High Water. If You've Been Wise, Wise Acre Comics and Found the Blaze, you have Marvell, Johnny Blaze, and you also have the Human Torch, who is the first Marvell superhero comic. Look quickly down your quest to cease. Johnny Quest and half of humanity will cease to exist. But Terry Scant with Marvel Gaze, you have Tar from DC, and you have Marvel Comics. Also, but Terry Scant with Marvel Gaze, you have Tar Baby from Marvel, and you also have Marvel Comics. Let's go a step further. You have Tar Pit in DC Comics, and you also have Captain Marvel from Marvel Comics. Just take the chest and go in peace. Treasure Chest Comics and Treasure Island Comics. Here is the only question in the whole poem. 
So why is it that I must go? It is The Question, a fictional superhero by DC. And leave my trove for all to seek. Treasure Trove Comics. And leave my trove for all to seek is DuckTales Treasure Trove Volume 1. The answer I already know. The answer answers it all. All of these comic book connections are the answer. I've done it tired and now I'm weak. Superhero fatigue and Marvel's weakest characters. So hear me all and listen good. Superman's super hearing and Superman was always good. Your effort will be worth the cold. There's a lot of effort in cold characters. Let's investigate this a little. Frost Giants by Marvell. Jack Frost by Marvell. Polar Boy by DC Comics. Blizzard by Marvell. Ice Maiden, DC. Frozone by Pixar. Elsa by Disney. Snow Queen Lumi by Vertigo. Ice by DC. Icicle by DC. Captain Cold by DC. Mr. Freeze by DC. The Night's King, HBO. Killer Frost by DC. Iceman by Marvel. If you are brave and in the wood, World of Wood Comics and Brian Wood Comics. If you are brave and in the wood, shop in the wood comics. If you are brave and in the wood comics. There's also Brave Comics. And also Brave Eagle comic book. I give you title to the gold. Booster gold character from DC Comics. And gold sponsor comic books announced. Gold titles. Let's just add gold key comics to that list. These comic book assimilations were the reason Force Fan said, give the poem to a child to read. The average age of a child into comic books is 12 to 13 years old. Force let us know these two different points that in his mind, he stays at about 13 years old. This survey, the average age of comic book readers were between 12 and 21 years old. Here, Forrest is telling us, my mind stays at about 13 years old. That's what he's saying. What is the mirror dimension in Marvel? Forrest let all of us know about the mirror dimension, but we missed it. The mirror dimension is a parallel dimension that allows the user to practice their magical abilities and fight their enemies without the public's knowledge. Here's what we all missed. My only goal in this endeavor is to talk about a few of my life experiences, and if any readers over the age of 12 don't see a little of themselves in this mirror, then maybe they deserve another turn. When you actually realize what Force Fen built here, just like an architect, it all starts to make perfect sense. He created a world of comic book superheroes hidden inside his stories and the poem and all of his verbal quotes and hints, just to match with the hidden cross with the names Kent and Esther. It's very apparent 
that every single person missed the true finding of the final resting place in July 2019, where the treasure was at the cross, except for me. But now people are seeing the immense work that Forrest Fenn took building this amazing hunt. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but everyone was duped and deceived about the real ending of Forrest Fenn's famous treasure hunt with a fake place in Wyoming, created by Shiloh Old, and the stand-in was Jack Stoof. If you truly believe that a man of Forrest Fenn's character and knowledge had spent 15 years on a treasure hunt, that when the final location was announced or truly blocked and hidden from the public with zero fanfare, yet nobody is able to see something line up, not even nine clues or something to align with the books that makes any sense. That's absolutely fraudulent intent. It's time to reevaluate the big pile of lies we received and call out the guilty parties involved in this cover-up. I have stood alone in this so-called Force Fen community. None of the vloggers are knowledgeable in comic books to see the thousands of connections Force Fen created over 15 years of his life. This brilliant and genius hunt. I'm the one true man from back east. Force Fen himself said solved his treasure hunt precisely. That was me and I have the proof. I've proven it many times over in my videos, and I'm done trying to convince the Shiloh sheep. I want the brilliant Comic-Con people out there. I want the ones who know about superheroes and supervillains. The comic books are for Kent, Clark Kent on the cross. Aunt Esther, the bronze goddess of fire, is the homely girl on Forrest's cross. The sad Fen community wants answers, but are unwilling to accept the actual factual truth. Hi folks, what you witnessed right here is the actual video that shows why Force Fence said give the poem to a child to read because they are going to understand all of the connections with comic books. Now I truly believe that there's many people out there that are going to see the connections because they are comic book buffs. They're, they're people who have saved comic books their whole life just like Force Fen did. And it's so obvious when you really when you really start looking into it and seeing what Force Fen built here for creation around superheroes. The reason being because he put Clark Kent on that cross that Force Fen hid in the Rocky Mountains. Kent and Esther. Now, folks, I've had my balls busted for 2 years from the Fen community that don't want to accept the truth, that don't want answers. I know there has to be people out there that are that have the imagination and say, I want to know what this actual solve was. Is this guy right? Are they lying about Jack Stoof? All of the information. The layers video that I put out has a ton of information. But right now, I'm pretty much done. I'm all done doing videos except for this set of videos that I'm producing right now. And they are going to be called Forest End. I'm done. I am done putting out videos after this about the actual solve. Because if people can't see what Forest Fen created in these videos that I put out, there's going to be about seven episodes, I'm guessing. And... Those videos will explain everything, just like this one did. This one, Forgive the Poem to a Child to Read, is the connections of why a child, a, a teen, 12 years old, 13 years old, will look at this poem and go, well, this is cold. Like, this is, this is Marvel gaze. It's Marvel gaze is what it really is. All of these videos that I'm going to put out right now will explain how this all came about and why I am the actual true solver and why it was lied about for hiding the actual real true place that the treasure chest was hidden. And that was Palisade Sill, New Mexico. 
at uh, Cimarron Canyon. Now, I put those, those answers in my other videos of how many Palisades there are, of all of the different stories he brings in and he talks about. I see how he brings in these clues. And I have my own reasons why I believe that. And that's in one of these videos too, in one of the episodes. So, the Clark Kent and Aunt Esther cross that Forrest Fenn himself placed at Palisade Sill. Kent and Esther. Folks, I've gone over this in my other videos. The Ken Esther is what Forrest Fenn created when he came to that realization of putting these names together into Ken Esther. Ken Esther. That's what he did. That was the creation. That was the ha 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 moment that Forrest Fenn built and revolved all of this around. It was a joke that he came up with. Because if you look at all of his books, Forrest Fenn, Forrest Fenn was the Joker. Forrest Fenn was the Riddler. That's what he did. He created a, a treasure hunt that if you did not solve the, the poem, the map inside the poem, you're not going to understand what Forrest Fenn did in his books. Folks, I'm telling you right now, I figured out in his poem where the actual search location was at Palisade Cell from the very first clue. The whole first stanza. That pinpoints Palisade Cell. If you look at it correctly, that's what I did. That's how I came up with Palisade Cell. I searched it four years before I realized, or three or four years until I found the blaze. When I found the blaze, it took me two more, two more years to figure out what he was actually saying when he said, look quickly down. And that is answered in the, in one of the episodes that I'm going to put out. But all of the answers are, are here in these episodes. This is the first one. And this one tells you and shows you how Forrest incorporated all of these comic book creations into his soul. And you know, there's probably even an Aunt Esther connection in the, in the, Poem somewhere. I didn't even look for it. I concentrated just on the superheroes, supervillains. Everything that Forrest Fenn said, why give the poem to a child? That is why, folks, when they start looking at it and start dissecting it and seeing the Marvel gaze and they see uh, uh, your effort will be worth the cold, all of those things have to do with superheroes. And they, as I've gone alone in there, it's Forrest Fenn's Fortress of Solitude. That's what it was. Superman had his Fortress of Solitude. Forrest Fenn had his fortress, his, his actual palisade of solitude. That's what it was, folks. A palisade surrounds a fort. Uh, a fort. It's, it's so creative. And that's why Forrest Fenn said three times in his, in his books, at least, imagination is more important than knowledge. Now, they have nothing to give you up in Wyoming. I know that for actual fact. I'm the guy that solved it. None of the other Fen community want to listen to it. They don't want it. They don't want it to be out there. They just want to keep going in limbo forever. And it's not going to happen. I'm going to make sure that people understand what Force Fen built here. My reputation as law enforcement for 20 years of service can go down the shitter if that's what is really going to end up happening. But I can tell you right now, there I have faith in the human race to be able to see the connections that Forrest Fenn built here. I see them. I pulled them out of the book. But what I need is, is the creative minds out there, the brilliant people, not the Forrest Fenn vloggers. I, I understand. They all, they all want to be the guy that solved it or the girl. Forrest Fenn said it was a man from back east. Others will say, I'm back east, I'm back east. It's more than just the nine clues, folks. It's more. It is, it is dissecting that poem into sections of nine clues. And if you look back at the beginning of this video, you will see the nine clues in order and how they were created by Forrest Fenn and how they work out. 
the the first one, the first one, he pinpoints his search area or our search area, his actual location, his actual pinpoint spot where the cross was. That's why I found that cross. And nobody is going to understand what Forrest Fenn built in his books unless you understand that that cross is everything. That's what Forrest Fenn put there for Clark Kent and Aunt Esther. The bronze goddess of fire. He had, he talked about my war for me, melding the names together. Canasta. That's what it was. Canasta. And then he used J.D. Solinger to bring in, J.D. Solinger was a Canasta fiend. And the actual saying in a, a, de a really bad hand is as dead as Canasta. How much more dead as Canasta can you get than, than as dead as Canasta? That's why J.D. Solinger. Sloan, Eric Sloan is in there because he gave a dedication in the books. He wrote a book about Eric Sloan for a dedication. The actual Eric Sloan Museum is in Kent. Kent, that's, there's so many connections to Kent. There's so many connections to Aunt Esther in these books. If you literally dive yourself into the books and look for the connections, of, he brings up Elizabeth, his grandmother. He brings up she she was always with the hat. Aunt Esther always had the hat. All of his clues in the books are about the two people that you don't know about until you find the cross that says Kent and Esther. And all these all these answers were in the olive jar, folks. That's the olive jar that's so important. That is why that I know. I claim because of my brain injury that I have savant acquired savant syndrome. I'm telling you folks right now. I may not have it fully, but I know that I'm the guy that solved this treasure hunt. And I'm giving the information. It may have taken a long time for me to figure it out and see it completely. Because I'm not familiar with comic books. That's where my my lacking was. The Aunt Esther I saw first. I found her. The Homely Girl. The Homely Girl on the Cross. That's how I found Aunt Esther. And afterwards I found Clark Kent by looking for Lewis and Clark is looking for Lois and Clark. And the real true Maverick, his wife's name was Lois Clark. And if you look at, this is where it's beautiful, folks. What Forrest Fenn created here and how he pulled it all together and joined it. But if you look up Amelia Earhart, her story, he calls her an impulsive Maverick. So if you look up Maverick, look up his significant other, look at, the letter that she wrote to her significant other. Okay? That's how you make the connection between Amelia Earhart. Amelia Earhart, the, the information Forrest Fenn gave you, was Amelia Earhart is an impulsive maverick. She's telling a story about her significant other. Look at Maverick. Look at his significant other. It's Lois Clark. It's beautiful the way the Forrest Fenn created this. And if... If the force, if the force fan community of vlogging people, whatever you want to call them, if they don't want to acknowledge what the actual solve was so that we can move on to who's at fault on why it was lied about in Wyoming, they all claim this is where it gets tricky. All of the vloggers will claim they want the truth, but they're not willing to fucking accept it. That's the, that's the thing with the fan community. When you have somebody who put his whole life on fucking hold and did videos to try to get the information out, because I knew I was right. I knew I'm the solver. But you've got all of these vloggers who try to shut you down, who don't even talk about you, because they're, they don't want the information out. They want to just stay in limbo, which is a sad, sad thing for the people who really want the truth. Now, these episodes that I'm going to put out, they are going to show you what actually happened and how this whole thing pulls together about Kent and Esther and about the Marvel gaze and, and all of the superheroes that Forrest Fenn actually hid in his stories and the obvious ones between Hulk and Thor. And, and those superheroes are the obvious ones. The hidden ones is what everybody missed. But I found them. I'm looking for them and I know there are more. And you folks have a chance to look into this and see those and find superheroes 
in all three books. But I'm only one man. I have a team looking up my my comic book connections. But even still, they've missed a lot. When I went back and did these episodes, when you see my Marvel Gaze video, you will you will see in just a short section of pages how many superheroes Force Fan Incorporated. That's why it took 15 years, folks. This wasn't a, a brownie fish at Nine Mile Hole in Wyoming. He said Wyoming. He's not going to put a $3 million chest out there saying, hey, it's hidden uh, in love with, with Wyoming. Yellowstone. He's not going to... You have to realize Force Fan's a lot smarter than what these people who are trying to hide the treasure are. So, all of that being said, I just want to let you know there's more episodes coming out this week that is going to explain everything that happened and why it happened and how this was all figured out by me. Um, and I believe it has some connection with being an acquired savant syndrome. And one of my videos is about that and why I think it is. Because Force Fen hid a savant in his stories that I found. This is what's so incredible. This story, and I've said it right along, they, these, these connections in this story should be making news lines right now of the amount of fraud that has been documented and placed into court by Shiloh Old, by Cynthia Meacham, by Jack Stoof. Oh, wait until you see the video. Wait until you see the episode about who's guilty to a, a death that was uh, definitely avoidable in in this whole in this whole treasure hunt. Somebody passed away from going out hunting. I'm not even going to get involved with that. You'll see it in the video. Anyways, I'm here just to put everyone's mind at ease on what really happened. And these episodes, the Forest End episodes will do that. That is why I'm here. That is why I'm I'm giving this information out. Give the poem to a child and he will see the comic book connections. Because how would a child know about all of these these things that people bring in from other videos? Anagrams and all this other stuff. You don't need that. The things Forrest Fenn gave you and all of us was to understand comic books and all of the Aunt Esther connections. There's so many, so, so, so many hidden Superman and Aunt Esther connections. And if you look for them, you will find them, folks. My name is Dave Woodard. This is the first of several episodes of the Forest End video series. I am Dave Woodard, the man from back east, the man that solved Forest Fence Treasure Hunt. And I'm giving the information out. Take it or leave it. But I have to deal with my cancer. I'm stopping these videos after this. You folks do what you want. But this is the end. This is Forest End of his videos. Of what truly happened to the treasure hunt in the Rocky Mountains. Thank you for watching, folks. I hope you have a great new year. It is January 1st. 2023 and the end is near. Thank you.